Have you ever seen a feeble elderly person? Picture them in your mind. They may get up very slowly, if at all unassisted. They shuffle as they walk instead of taking confident strides. They simply can't lift up certain day-to-day -day objects. That is frailty. That is age sapping us of ourselves. Now, think of someone of a comparable age, maybe in their 70s or 80s or beyond, yet they stand up without fuss. They move about confidently. They move simple objects without much issue. The difference between those two scenarios is striking. It's overwhelming even. And one of the keys to that difference is a tissue that you use all the time. It is muscle. Even more impressive is that this tissue is called post-mitotic, meaning that once you're born, the same muscle cells propelling you in childhood are the same ones sustaining you 50 years later. That is quite different from many of the other cells of your body that divide and die as needed. So you can imagine that taking care of them is pretty critical, and I'll show you exactly how critical it really is by leaning on this study right here. Now, if we compare young whippersnappers in their 20s against various groups of older individuals in their 70s, we get some incredible findings. You ready for this? Check this out. We have the four groups shown in the bottom left corner of each image. Now, if you've never seen this before, what we're looking at are cross sections of muscle tissue. So each of these blobs, which have defining lines around them, is a muscle cell. You'll obviously notice that some are blue and others are red, which isn't natural. We, and I mean researchers, apply different stains to the muscle cells to identify the type of muscle that we're seeing here. So the stain identifies if the muscle cell is a type 1 or a type 2. Now, a bit like a type A and type B personality. So type one labeled in blue tends to produce less force, but generate force for longer periods of time. Type two labeled in red tends to produce more force, but for shorter periods of time. Now, neither is good or bad. They both serve a function, but as we age, we tend to experience a shift to type one as we lose the force generation ability of our muscle cells. So that context in mind, we tend to shift blue with age. What do you see here? That's right. The old control do shift blue, as predicted and shown across many studies. However, look at the other two old conditions compared to the young. There's certainly more red, but especially in those that strength train. But what's unique about this situation is that these older individuals have been exercising for literal decades, their whole lives practically, just in different ways. So some focused on endurance training, some on strength-based training. So long distance runners or bikers for those in the endurance camp and powerlifting and strength training for those in the latter. So the main point here is that those who have been strength training for the last 50 years have a closer muscle type profile to young muscle. Still, that doesn't tell us about the actual function or if this is a consistent truth. Keep in mind, I just showed you a single image, not the average data collected from many people. Well, I can tell you that this fiber type difference is still maintained when looking at more people. And as for the functional measures, as in does this translate into greater strength, the answer is, well, look for yourself again. The higher the bars go, the better the performance of that group. So the old group that did not engage in exercise on a dedicated, regular basis had the worst results across the board, likely speaking to the power of aging. But what can overcome this power, like Vegeta turning Super Saiyan for the first time and ripping Android 19 apart? <laughs> Strength training. Not only does lifelong strength training maintain muscular performance, but the participants performed better than those 50 years younger than them. Let that sink in. This tissue that's been part of you since you were born, that has had to endure a lifetime of work, delivers another mind-blowing performance. To be clear, the young group weren't sitting on the couch all day either. 
They were recreationally active. Now, admittedly not bodybuilders or powerlifters, but still healthy, young, and active. The ability for muscle to preserve its youth is one of the greatest biological marvels I've ever encountered. The point here is that strength training throughout life maintains much of the youth of our musculature, not just in the shape, but more importantly, in function. 50 year difference. I mean, that's incredible. The reasons are many from the stimulation to the actual muscle cells that leads them to grow, to express genes that maintain the structure of the muscle cell to something that happens outside the muscle called denervation. If you're interested, I'm going to be getting into the denervation as well as something strength training does to our stem cells as we get older from a different study. That's all included in the extended video of the one that you're currently watching, exclusive for the Physionic Insiders. Plus, all these perks right here, as you've <laughs> likely heard me mention many times before. An insider membership gives you access to all my work, summaries, podcasts, live sessions, greater access to the insider community and me, and much more. The link to join is in the description. Hope to speak with you over there. Okay, we clearly saw significant benefits linked to lifelong exercise. And I certainly am not going to turn around and claim that that is now all nonsense, but I would like to note two important things. One, the main study that we've been focused on is a comparative study. So they're not actually following people over 50 years of life. They're simply grouping people based on this exercise characteristic. In this kind of study, we can't officially say if it's exercise alone or exercise in general leading to these results. For example, the strength-based older athletes could all be taking testosterone or have an incredibly anabolic diet or whatever the reason. I do think it's unrealistic to think that exercise didn't play a major, if not the major role in these differences, especially considering that it being a consistent through line throughout the decades, unlike other of these many factors, you know, like testosterone. So my belief, though I can't say for certain, is that exercise is the primary explanation for what we saw. Second, not all studies that look into this agree. Most trend in this direction, but the exact results, for example, similar, if not better, strength in master's athletes is not universal across studies. It is likely explained by the different ways that studies assess the same measure. For example, in this study, they focused on leg press, a great and controllable exercise. However, would these results remain if we looked at something like, I don't know, a barbell curl, a pull-up? You see, the measure is the same, but how it's measured is different. I'd suspect that's a major contributor for some of these differences in results. To be clear, almost all the studies show these improvements. It's just the degree of improvement varies somewhat. So what's the takeaway here? Well, we're playing against time. If you're already in your 70s, you might think that this study is pretty useless to you unless you've been exercising for decades, in which case you're literally jumping for joy. But don't despair. The saying goes, the best time to do something was yesterday and the next best is today. And it's not just a saying, there's truth to it, scientifically speaking, as I'll direct you later. The takeaway here is that start exercising early and take it seriously, do it consistently. The second takeaway is to focus on strength training for the best bang for your buck in maintaining your muscle type profile, in maintaining your strength and force and more. The third takeaway, if you're interested, I have a free beginner's training program that's included in the Physiona community. You're welcome to use it if you don't know where to start. And finally, if you are already in your 60s and 70s and even beyond, I mentioned don't despair. And that's because it's not too late. There's brilliant discoveries in people just starting to lift weights at an advanced age. I cover them right here. I hope you found this as fascinating as I did. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next one.